What's happening? I'm Calvin Lincoln, and welcome to another edition of Soul School. Over the years, I've taped a lot of just different shows and just different moments, and oftentimes I have a lot of B-roll and don't have the opportunity to use stuff. And uh, as I was going back and looking through old tapes, actually I found a real magical moment that I had taped up in Las Vegas, and I was reminded by it by a friend of mine in Southern California. She kind of reminded me about it, and so I went back and I took a look at the tapes. And... Uh, it was the one and only Steve Arrington. And uh, actually, this was just a sound check, but you got a chance to see his it factor. You know, he had that it factor that JT from Cool and the Gang have, and he also has that um, Dyke and the Blazers funk kind of thing. He has a very funky disposition. He understands arrangements. I got a chance to talk to him when I was actually up there. He probably doesn't even remember the conversation, but he was talking to me about Coke Escovito and living up in the Bay Area for a little bit and getting that part of it and also the the Dayton Funk thing and just uh, really, really cool dude and actually one of the greatest of all times. And he's not looked at in that way he's often respected but when i think about a cat like steve Arrington, i think about groups like one way who just had a whole lot of just great stuff going on but are not really looked at but respected and uh like i say steve Arrington, it factor just oozing all out of his pores just oozing all out of his pores and uh at sound check he was uh, actually directing the Stone City Band, who was his backup band for that particular show. And you could just see what kind of a stage general he was. And uh, not a lot of moving and stuff like that, but just that Dayton, do we, do do, stank, nasty funk. And actually, you know, too, speaking on Slave, I think about um, Mark Adams a lot. And one of the stories I want to share with you guys is... Uh, it came from a family member of mine who was actually kind of a gospel person, but who still listened to secular music. And I'll never forget my nephew, who's a little bit older than me because I had an older sister who was much older, long story short. But anyway, he had like this real bad system. He had a Trans Audio 1800 turntable, Pioneer HPM 900 speakers, you know, just the whole shebang. And the hardness of the world was out at that time for uh, Slave, but we were still playing that first album like it was nobody's business. And I'll never forget, we were playing Slide, and he kind of heard it, and he came in the room, and he was like, man, sounds like a damn bike horn or whatever. We was like, yeah, it is. And so he kind of, like, was dismissive of it. He leaves out the room, you know, and, you know, you could really hear the bass. And uh, <laughs> he came back in. When it got to Drax solo, he kind of listened with his arms folded. And when the song went off, um, I normally don't cuss and stuff like that over the air or whatever. Uh, I'm a cusser, but not when I'm doing soul school. But I got to keep it real on exactly what he said. He was like, whoever the fuck that bass player is, that motherfucker's bad. That motherfucker's bad. He's like, yeah, they they nice. I like them. You know, but, uh, you know, we were like kind of like laughing because... He's not a cat that really talks like that, but it's a reminder of what Slave actually kind of made us feel like back in the day, you know. And uh, although this is just Steve Arrington and actually just kind of going through some numbers, just going through a few changes and stuff with the Stone City Band before a show, but, you know, this is something that I just felt like I just had to show. In the meantime, in between time, enjoy and funk and roll. Yeah. 
talking about some grits. Yeah. Grits. Grits. I'm talking about some chitlins. If y'all don't hear me up in here. Okay, let's try this again. Cause a lot of niggas ain't, ain't up on this ooh wee. Let's bring it to them. Stop.